Let's bring in One Nation leader Pauline Hanson now joins me live from Queensland. Uh, just on that topic, Pauline, are you a little bit disturbed by how vague Joe Biden appears some of the time? Not a little bit, a huge amount. He's, he's the President of the United States and his performance, I think, is pathetic. And you're exactly right. They're on Donald Trump like a tonne of bricks, but they let Joe Biden get away with so much that um, they, they wouldn't have let Donald Trump get away with. And that's the media today. They are so left-leaning, um, they're so biased in the reporting, they are pushing their own agenda as well, and this is why they're not pulling him up. They do it to me as well, Chris. OK, they don't put across things that I say. They are biased in reporting on me. They always have been, right from the day dot when I joined Parliament. And, um, and nothing has changed, really. So they shut down to report the truth of what I say and they want to actually expand on it and, and um, make it controversial. Yeah, you are spot on. They pick and choose their targets, that's for sure. Now, just briefly, you've attacked the, the Matildas. Yeah. They had a great win in Tokyo, but you don't like the fact that they were displaying the Aboriginal flag rather than the Australian flag, or perhaps both? I was furious when I actually saw that photo of them displaying it, and that was used as an official um, photo um, with the Aboriginal flag. I think it's a slap in the face. I took it as a slap in the face to me personally, as an Australian. Um, the Aboriginal flag was acknowledged by the former um, Governor-General, Jeffries, Major Jeffries, um, that it was acknowledged as an official flag for the Aboriginal people, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. But the fact... Oh, no, sorry, I will clarify that. Aboriginal people, because Torres Strait Islanders have their own flag. Yep, yep. But to me, that is a slap in the face to the Australian people, all right, because they're over there representing Australia as a whole, as a nation, as one nation under the Australian flag. Now, if that photo goes internationally, as it has done, people are going to say, well, so, sorry, who are they? What country do they belong to? That is not our official national flag. And I am so furious about this. And my office has had numerous phone calls today. People have actually said, good on you for standing up because I feel offended by it as well. People have said that we've been rung, Barnaby Joyce's office, other members of parliament, they are gutless, too gutless to actually make a comment with regards to it. And I want to know, where does the Prime Minister stand on this? Well, it's a fair question because I think a lot of Australians will agree with you. A lot of us... Uh, uh perfectly willing to accept and happy, in fact, proud to see someone like Cathy Freeman running with the uh, Aboriginal flag and the Australian flag after winning an event, that, that, that's fine. But to, Correct. to push away the Australian flag altogether when you're actually out there competing under that flag does seem to be a bit of a slap in the face. So it'd be interesting to get a, a ruling from those people you mentioned, not to mention the Australian Olymp Olympic uh, Committee. Now, back to the pandemic and what's going on here. Do you think uh, it's fair to talk about what's happening in Sydney? as a national emergency? Um, what's happening in Sydney? Look, uh, last year we had... Uh, it felt like a pandemic when it first started with the coronavirus because we didn't know how to actually handle it. I think with the Delta variant of it, that it's not... It is contagious, more contagious, but it's not as deadly as what it was. I, Chris, I will reiterate time and time again the impact it is having on people in the country and for Queensland to lock down for four weeks to New South Wales is ridiculous. I blame the Prime Minister that he gave the power and control to, to the states when he started the National ca Cabinet. I think people lost faith in him because he has not been the leader here. He's allowing them to go ahead and do whatever they want to do, shut down the state borders whenever it suits them. It's disrupting people's lives. It's destroying lives. There's more issues that we we have to face with and it's destroying the economy and New South Wales is going under $300 million a day. I yeah, wish the, the, the hell they would the, get their bloody act together. The federal government's just bankrolling these. Now, obviously, New South Wales has got a problem. You can make a case for some sort of a limited lockdown in New South Wales at the moment, but you've got the whole of South Australia and Victoria locked down for really quite small outbreaks. Now, and you know what? I'm actually considering not going to Canberra for Parliament because do you think that I want to take myself and my staff down to Canberra, to Parliament, and knowing that Palaszczuk at any minute can say, oh, we're going to close the borders to Canberra, so I've got to come back and self-isolate it and so have my staff at our own cost? 
you know, I don't think it's fair of my staff. It is so up in the air that they can do whatever they wanted to do. And it's this, so I'll go over it again. This is why I wanted to challenge it in the High Court that the Prime Minister set guidelines on when you close the borders and why you should close them, not allowing state premises at their whim. These state borders are an absolute shambles at the moment. Thanks for joining us, Pauline. Have a good weekend. Thanks, Chris. You too. Bye. Pauline Hanson there, live from Scenic Rim in Queensland.